So I made a vlog that ends my vending machine business. And under that vlog, I received a comment. Why did you neglect your vending machine business? Just before I get to that, just a quick briefing on how I started the vending machine business. So I'm an electrician. I decided, you know what? I want to further my knowledge. I'm going to decide to go to uni and study at a HNC in electronic engineering. When I got to this campus, it was tiny. There were no vending machines on site. There was no canteen on site. Literally, our canteen was the high street. So one day I was in the library and it was a self-study period, which means go on the internet and basically surf the net and do nothing until your next lecture. I'm in the library and I thought to myself, you know, I wonder how much it costs to buy a vending machine. Like, you know, whether it's secondhand or brand new. Well, I found out <laughs> you could all spend 3000 5000 10000 for a secondhand one. For a brand new one, you could pay 20000 But obviously, these are going to be the, the best of the best vending machines. But I saw one vending machine for about £1,000. So I thought, you know what, like, I could afford this. I've got a couple grand in my account, I can afford this. So I approached the manager of the uni and I said to him, listen, like, you know, I know we ain't got no canteen on site and the shop's around the corner, but sometimes you might not even want to have to leave the campus. You might just want to, you know, buy something on site. I was like, how about I buy a vending machine and install it? He liked the idea of it, but he was a bit reluctant at first because... There was a separate company before I was at the uni. Apparently, they had a vending machine there and they never maintained it. It used to leak water, used to break down and never used to maintain the vending machine. So he said, oh, how can I trust that you're going to maintain the vending machine? Well, I said, well, first and foremost, I'm a student here. So, you know, you know where to find me. Why am I going to not maintain my machine if I'm here? Anyway. He said, yeah, all right, cool. Let me know when you've got the vending machine. Let me know your prices and that. And then, yeah, you can basically bring it when you feel like. Well, I got a price for the vending machine. I done a little price list. Approached him a second time and he said, no, we don't need a vending machine business. And I was like, what? Anyway, I went away and I thought to myself, you know what? I can't take no for an answer. So a couple of weeks later, I basically went into the manager's office and I begged him and sold him a dream. I basically pleaded with him to get this vending machine in this uni. And he said, all right, all right, all right, all right, you can bring it. So after some madness and chaos, I've eventually got the vending machine installed at the uni. And from there, I didn't just want to have one vending machine. I wanted to start this as a flipping business because it took me back to my childhood when I was in school. I used to buy and sell crisp and drinks and now I'm just doing it in a more mature version, more a most official version. So I decided to go. I used to literally walk down the street, you know, I used to go into office buildings, I used to go in this building, that building, workplace buildings and that. I used to go to student halls, I used to ring student halls other universities to try and get my vending machine business going. I used to try and get vending machines in these different establishments. Even went to community centres. No luck at first. And then one day I was lying in my bed. It was Saturday. And I remember I went to a christening in Islington a couple years ago. And this is when I was an apprentice. I talked to some random black woman. And she's the ma she was the manager of the community centre. And she said to me, when you become a fully qualified electrician, take my number now. When you become fully qualified, give me a call and I'll sort you out doing some work. You can be our electrician. You can be our maintenance electrician for this whole building. So long as you know what you're doing, obviously. And I remember I had her number. And I thought, you know what? Let me call her. Forget about the electrical thing. I want to start a vending machine business. Now, let me call her and see if I can get a vending machine inside this community center call the number i think the number you you have dialed has not been recognized which means that person no longer uses that number anymore so me i don't take no for an answer and although i didn't get a no still i decided you know what i'm gonna go down there 
jumped on a motorbike, went straight down to Islington. Yeah, this was on a cold call, you know, literally. It was a Saturday. Went down to the uh, community centre in Islington and I knocked on the main door of the community centre and some random woman's come to the door and I basically asked for the woman that I'm looking for. She said, oh, she's not here at the moment, but what I can do is give you two of the other centre managers' uh, email address. Gave me an email. I sent both of them the same email about the vending machine business, whatever. They liked the idea of it. They called me in for a little meeting. Had the meeting. Again, sold them the dream. Whatever. Bought a second vending machine. And they stored it at the community centre. Now, fast forward about three years. The last job I was at, I was earning big boy money. £360 a day. And I was working at this workplace in Holborn every single day for about four and a half months straight I took one day off in four and a half months you know one day off to do an exam because it was flipping important it was to do with my electrical qualification and I had a few days off during the Christmas period because it was compulsory if I could have came in I would have and even then I still came in for three days on on an emergency call but anyway, I neglected the vending machine business because first and foremost, I had to get rid of the vending machine at my uni. So I was down to one. At, at, a, at a time, I had two vending machines. Yeah? I had one at my uni, had one at the community centre in Islington. And I had to get rid of the one at the uni because they moved campus and they didn't want to bring the vending machine. They were going to have another company manage it. Cool. Stuck that one in storage. Cool. But then the one at the community centre, I never made that much money. Uh, maybe a couple hundred pounds a month or something like that. And I was so busy at this construction site. I remember I'm the supervisor. I'm working there from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The next Monday to Sunday, yeah, rolling, yeah, Groundhog Day, yeah. I was so busy at this job, I didn't even have time to take a day off from work. Obviously, I had a key to the uh, community centre, so I can go there after hours. But I just didn't bother go. Like, I was earning so much money, it wasn't even worth my time, literally. Literally. I was earning £360 a day. Imagine, it, there's 30 days in a month. 30 days in a month, you know, I was earning £360 a day. I was turning over about 10 grand a month. So my vending machine, in a month, it would generate me about £200, £100 or whatever. That's over a 30-day period. £100, £200. I generated more in one day at work than 30 days from that vending machine. One day work, you know, £360, 30 days, £200, do the maths, literally. So it just weren't, my, it weren't worth my time. I was earning so much money from this workplace, it just weren't even worth my time to take a day off or even go there after work. Like... The maths is just, the numbers are so crazy. I was earning from this workplace. It, 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 it was a joke. Compa the vending machine was a joke to how much I was earning. Literally, the money that I earned over a four and a half month period, yeah, like a man saved like pfft, easily 25 grand. Listen, guys, it's flipping November right now. I got fired at the end of January. So I've been off since February. A solid nine months, you know. I haven't worked because I earned so much money from this construction. Like, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, guys, about make sacrifice. But I earned so much money from this workplace. It would have taken me years. That vending machine would have to have been at that community centre for years. Years. To accumulate the same amount of money that I made in four and a half months. At this construction site. So you know what? I just abandoned it. 
a ben de also focus on this job a a ben de neveni machine i think at first it needed topping up obviously i wasn't even paying attention to it forgot about it next thing i know the thing's broken down and the community center managers they didn't contact me to let me know that it broken down so they'd seen that the vending machine had broken down and what they used to do they used to put a sign oh do not use the vending machine because it's broken down and they seen oh a month's gone by and the vending machine hasn't been fixed because i used to fix it myself usually when the vending machine breaks it's just some silly little thing that i can fix myself raw jay hasn't been here for a whole month to fix the vending machine so therefore he has not topped it up and then eventually they either sent me an email or phone call or text and said listen man we just want you to to remove this vending machine now because you're not maintaining it and i said oh no problem all i was thinking about this 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 is how much i did not care about this vending machine in this particular establishment all i was thinking about is i hope this don't affect i hope this don't stop me from uh going into work I, you know i had to use someone reliable that i know to remove the vending machine i had to pre-book uh, a storage unit because i didn't even want to take a day off work that's how much money i was earning it wasn't even that's how much money i was earning from this workplace it wasn't even worth me taking a day off work to remove this vending machine literally i know a man i paid him about 100 pounds to remove the vending machine and stick it in storage if that vending machine obviously that vending machine cost me about 1560 pounds if that vending machine was only worth 100 pounds i would have just told the i would have just told the man who i got to pick up the thing just dispose of it i wouldn't even have bothered to stick it in storage because that hundred pound, I will earn that in three hours. That's just three hours overtime for me. What's the point? So, that's why I neglected the the vending machine business. It just it just wasn't even worth my time to go and maintain it and fix it because of how much money I was earning at the time. Like compared compared to something like this, imagine you're a footballer. And you're on, I don't know, 100 grand a month or something like that, however much these men get paid. Imagine you have a property that's up in the north of England that you bought a very long time ago. And it's only earning you £300 a month in rent. You're not going to really care about it. You're going to be like, whatever. And if, if someone squats in the property, whatever, that money, that that, that monthly income... That's nothing to you. And that's that that's how I just looked at that vending machine. In that establishment, it was just in the wrong place. That's that's what was the problem. The problem was it was in the wrong place. It had a low footfall rate, but it was, I just found it too difficult to get it in other establishments. Like I, as I said before, I went to like uh, student halls and stuff, had a presentation, they liked it, and then <sighs> I went to some place, I can't remember what it was called, not Newlon Housing, but it's one of them housing associations. They run student accommodation halls. And I gave them a presentation. They liked it. I had three people. Two were in the room with me and one was on the phone call. He was elsewhere, but he was on the phone. Listening to the presentation, they liked it. And they're, the dumbest reason they gave me for not accepting my business proposal was... We, we, we think your business is too small and we think that your business, your vending machine is going to rely on uh, the sales or something to generate money. I'm like, what? What? Like, it's so dumb. I can't even remember the excuse they gave me. It was just so stupid. It was like, oh, your business is going to depend on 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 the sales that it makes. It, it was just so stupid. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe the excuse they gave me. Something dumb like my business is going to depend on the success of my vending machine. Oh, man. Anyway, so in a nutshell, that's why my vending machine, I neglected the vending machine business. It just weren't worth my time. It just was not worth my time. £200 a month, and I'm earning more than that in one day. <laughs> so, but anyway, I bought the vending machine from a place called Pure Food Systems. I will leave uh, a website link in the description below, or at least the company name anyway but i'm sure i'll be able to get a website link i'm assuming the company's still running as well uh, obviously it's during the lockdown period it's like the 4th of november right now um but i'm assuming the company's still gonna be up and running after lockdown 
So that was a good question from the viewer. Why did I neglect my vending machine business? In a nutshell, I neglected it because it just wasn't worth my time. I was earning so much money that that little two hundred pound, that little two hundred pound, at the end of the month, was it even worth me chasing after? Stay worse.